Check him out. Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk him out. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Matt Moreno. Matt, some surprising news out of Dodgers camp on Wednesday. Hanser Alberto, the signing that we've known about for a while, became official. He was dealing with some visa issues, couldn't make it on time. He's now there. He signs a one-year, $1.6 million deal, club option for 2023, um, $2 million deal, a $250,000 buyout if they decline that. But the, the headline of this move is how they made space on the 40-man roster, which is Matt Beatty was designated for assignment. Now, they've got a little bit of time before he becomes a free agent. He'll go on waivers. They can work out a trade, that kind of thing. But Matt Beatty designated for assignment. I did not have on my bingo card him being the first guy to be DFA'd once they needed space. How surprised were you by this move? Yeah, I was extremely surprised. I mean, that this if you had asked me, you know, how how do you think the Dodgers are going to make room on their 40-man roster, DFAing Beatty wouldn't have even popped into my mind just because, you know, I think – He's somebody that the organization has believed in as much as his playing time last year was sort of sporadic, like Dave Roberts and the front office have always spoken very highly of him. Yeah. Uh, and kind of, you know, some of the defensive strides that he tried making last spring and even in years past. So that was not on my radar at all. So when, when that ended up being the announcement, I thought, oh man, you know, it was surprising, obviously to say the least. And I think really what it kind of boils down to is I think Beatty was sort of a roster casualty of, you know, the off season yeah. stuff that we've touched on and, the Dodgers had to add uh, five players to their 40-man roster to protect them against a Rule 5 draft that then, at least the Major League portion, never ended up happening. Yeah. And so that has kind of set off, you know, a series of dominoes that they were juggling through spring training with, you know, signing guys, putting them on the 60-day IL right away to then keep that uh, – open spot moving and so you know they just ran out of options at this point yeah and when you sign a guy like Hanser Alberto like look the Dodgers didn't have Freddie Freeman signing as as a surefire thing Alberto I believe that signing was was done before the Freddie Freeman deal was and so but at the same time Andrew Friedman's a smart guy like they had plans in place to know that essentially they were choosing Hanser Alberto who's coming with a major league level salary not a big one 1.6 million dollars but he is replacing Matt Beatty, who was on a minimum, wasn't even arbitration eligible until next year. And so I think the two key points here are, one, you've already mentioned. The Dodgers added five guys to their 40-man roster, who four of the five will probably not at any point impact the 2022 season. Um, maybe James Outman, especially now that Beatty's gone. I mean, he's one of five outfielders that I think they've got. I mean, I guess there's there's six technically, and, and <laughs> there's a lot of versatility, so that all those numbers are going to be misleading. But he's probably the only guy, I would say, of the five with a chance of contributing this year. The fact that no Rule 5 draft ends up happening at the Major League level hurts the Dodgers. But the second piece is, and I think organizationally this is the reason for this, Matt Beatty seems like a great guy, solid player, he's replacement level. But this is the Dodgers, in my estimation, basically saying we are going for quality over quantity. We're going to take swings on high upside guys, not middling guys. I think we know who Matt Beatty is at this point. Could Matt Beatty and should Matt Beatty be starting for half of the of the league? Yeah, absolutely. Did the Giants cycle through a bunch of Matt Beatty types last year? Absolutely. But if you're the Dodgers and you're looking at Matt Beatty and saying, what is his ceiling and is he ever going to develop into a guy that we feel like we can start? I think the answer is no. I looked at some of his numbers. Last season, average exit velocity was 86.7. That would have ranked him among qualifying players. He was not a qualifying player, but had he qualified, that number would have ranked him 125th out of 132 qualifiers. Hard hit percentage, 124th out of 132 qualifiers. Career line, 262 batting average, 333 on base, 400, 425 slugging percentage, so a 750 OPS. Again, solid, but we're talking about the Dodgers here. 1.2 wins above replacement, 18 home runs. That's across 240 games, 556 at bat. So if you basically look at Matt Beatty as a full season player, he's not plus defensively anywhere. He can give you a serviceable option in left field, a serviceable option at first base, a serviceable option in right field probably. A 750 OPS is nothing special. Um, 10 to 15 home runs. Like, he's fine. But I think this is the Dodgers saying, we will take our chances with a guy like James Outman, Darian Nunez on the pitching side, who the upside is there, even if the floor is potentially much lower. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like you touched on, you know, one thing that kind of hurt Beatty as well is his defensive yeah. uh, skill set. You know, as much as he sort of did improve over the past couple of years, it still was relatively obvious that the Dodgers didn't necessarily trust him in the field or want him playing significant innings there. 
Now, I thought with the DH coming to the National League that he would have been somebody who benefited from that as much as the team has said, you know, we want to rotate our everyday players through there. I thought that that opened up another opportunity for him. And frankly, you know, going back a couple of years, I always thought that Beatty and Edwin Rios were a little redundant. Mm. Both hit from the left-handed side. Both basically play the corner infield positions. And so I think he's also getting squeezed by that a little bit. And also in camp, you know, Jake Lamb continues to impress. And, I mean, he could very well end up playing his way onto the opening day roster. Uh, Miguel Vargas. Yeah. And then also, you know, kind of tying into the Edwin Rios thing again, Beatty bats left-handed. And we've touched on it. I have especially have highlighted it. The Dodgers have too many left-handed hitters on their bench. They need to find a way to balance it out. And so you add all of it up, and now here we are today with this move. Yeah, and, and look, we probably should be less surprised because the Dodgers told us how they felt about Matt Beatty all of last season when Billy McKinney was starting over him. You know, like, he played 120 games last year, but how often were, were we sitting here or Daniel and I were sitting here saying something like, where is Matt Beatty? Like, I will take a serviceable at-bat for Matt Beatty. Last year, we dealt with the below-replacement-level guys that Beatty is better than. This year, though, you're looking around, you're saying Edwin Rios is back. Um, Zach McKinstry is still a guy they want to get playing time. Gavin Lux has now become a bench bat, basically. Matt Beatty's not playing any over any of those guys. Now you've got Hanser Alberto, who you've chosen intentionally to place ahead of him, and there you go. One question I want to ask you, I guess sort of a two-parter. Some people on Twitter Wednesday, as this was coming out, pointing to Jake Lamb as a guy who has had some success at the major league level. Um, is he part of the reason? Like, are the Dodgers looking at him and saying, hey, he's a minor league deal guy who maybe could give us the same sort of projection um, production without taking up a 40-man roster spot. Now, that's a lot to ask of a guy in small sample size in spring training, that kind of a thing. He would need to be added to the 40-man. Miguel Vargas, who you mentioned, needed to be added to the 40-man. So it's kind of like the Dodgers, maybe they're looking around and saying, we have guys who we think are as good as Matt Beatty but aren't taking up 40-man roster spots. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, you know, if as much as I think Jake Lamb is making a case to make the opening day roster. They might have to approach him and say, look, like because of 40 man stuff right now, we can't necessarily do it for opening day. Go to AAA maybe for a couple weeks and then we'll be able to kind of shuffle you back in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's hard to say that Jake Lamb didn't play some part of into this decision. Yeah. And I mean, keep in mind, guys that are on minor league deals, like now, sometimes a veteran will have some fancy stuff in his contract. Like if I'm not on the opening day roster or by this date, then I, I get to be released if I want to. Most guys don't get that. Most guys, you sign a minor league deal. That means you go to minor league camp when you don't make the opening day roster. And so in many cases, the Dodgers don't have loyalty. You know, they don't owe these guys anything. Last thing I'll get you, because this is a 40-man roster conversation. I'm looking down it. I mean, are there names that jump to mind to you who, look, the Dodgers have a full 40, man. So any other moves that they would want to make, if they wanted to bring up a Vargas or a Lamb, they would need to make a move. I've said all along, I wonder if David Price is a guy that's on the chopping block. We've got no indication from quotes or anything if he's a guy. But outside of him, I mean, Darian Nunez is another guy who, like, we haven't seen a ton of. We haven't heard a ton of. He's on the 40, man. But they seem like they like him. His stuff seems pretty nasty. Aside from those two guys, I really don't know who would be next on the, you know, basically being designated for assignment as I look down the 40-man roster? I mean, can you think of anybody? No, it's definitely tough. I mean, it, I think the most likely scenario might be at this point just an unexpected trade. And I yeah. know we've touched on uh, touched on it a little bit. The Dodgers might try to look to uh, cut some salary, and that was reported as being a factor in kind of the timeline and stuff, why Kenley Jansen didn't come back and he ended up with the Braves instead. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, they're in a tough position, but I mean, look, here we are. We didn't expect Matt Beatty to get DFA. So who knows? I mean, the organization could be making their own sort of internal evaluations and decide that there's a player that we don't necessarily think they would yeah. cut ties with, but they end up feeling comfortable to do it. Yeah. And who knows? There's guys that aren't going to be ready for opening day. Maybe they find a way to slide one of those guys onto the 60 day IL, open up a spot that way. Um, you know, they've got a, a glut of starting pitching too. I mean, they've got like nine or 10 starting pitchers that are, are all expecting and hoping to be at the major league level. So we'll see how it plays out. But the headline again, Hanser Alberto added to the 40 man roster officially signs a contract we've known about for a few weeks, one year, $1.6 million with a team option for year two. But Matt Beatty is the casualty designated for assignment. The Dodgers now, again, presumably over the next few days, will try and do what they did with Luke Rayleigh. See if they can spin him and at least get something back, some minor league talent or something um, that does not take up a 40-man roster spot in exchange. So let us know what you think below. That's Matt Moreno. My name is Jeff Spiegel. As always, we appreciate you joining us. Check out DodgerBlue.com, DodgerBlue1958. And breaking news in the last couple of weeks, we've got a podcast as well. So if you're a podcast person on Apple or Spotify, wherever you check it out, search for Dodgerheads, subscribe, rate, review. We'd greatly appreciate that. And of course, 
subscribe and ring the notification bell here on YouTube as well. We appreciate you joining us. We'll see you next time.